In the first episode of season four, there is a scene with Dr. Melfi where Tony speaks frankly about what will likely happen to him considering he is a boss. Melfi gets worried as Tony says the most likely outcomes are prison or death. Tony, however, lays out a third option and references a friend of his. You know, let me finish. There's a third way to wrap it up. You rely only on family. Not many men could survive without the love and support of their wife and children. No, 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 no. I'm talking about business. You trust only blood. A friend of mine. Had his name you would know. Stood out of the can and in charge. Living in Florida till he was 81 years old because he only gave orders to his son. No other conversations that could come back in testimony. That guy is Sam the Plumber and is most certainly a major inspiration for the Tony Soprano character. When Lucky Luciano first ratified the 26 Mafia families of the United States, he allowed one family in Jersey, known sometimes as the De Cavalcante family, after Simone, Sam the Plumber, De Cavalcante. Despite the New York families having plenty of operations in the Garden State, this family was separate and operated in the Elizabeth, Newark, and Kenilworth areas. Much in the same way that Tony and the guys hang out in the back of a pork store, so too did Sam report to his plumbing supply company each day. He entertained a steady stream of visitors discussing mafia matters with his lieutenants, dealing with family problems and a secret affair with his mistress. A series of names pulled right from the show make an appearance or are mentioned. Pussy, Zerilli, Parisi, and even Malanga. Gotcha, Malanga. Unbeknownst to him, the FBI had placed a bug in the back room and was secretly recording everything happening in the room. At times, Sam the Plumber sounded like a concerned father trying his best in a world gone mad. He often lamented the loss of the old codes and honor that used to govern the Mafia life. He was picked up, complaining to Captain Frank Majuri, Sometimes, Frank, the more you see, the more disillusioned you become. But lately, I'm getting the feeling that I came in at the end. The best is over. Many Americans, I think, feel that way. I think about my father. He never reached the heights like me. But in a lot of ways, he had it better. He had his people. They had their standards. They had pride. Today, what do we got? In one instance, the FBI picked up a story about how another mobster had committed a murder and buried the body on a farm, only needing to move it a few months later. When he dug the body up, he said the man's hair and toenails had continued to grow. This is obviously where they got the idea for when Christopher kills Emil Kolar and then has to dig his body up. It also relates to, in Season 5, when Tony B. and Christopher go to Uncle Pat's farm because he's selling the place, and dig up old bodies that were buried there. Sam the Plumber even got his name in the paper for fighting a $22 speeding ticket. In the end, the judge wasn't buying it and forced him to pay court costs plus the cost of the ticket. This is most certainly the inspiration for Tony's battle with the police officer in the third season episode, Another Toothpick. I also can't help but feel like in the same way it ended up costing Sam more than if he had just paid the ticket, the same thing happened to Tony when he got the cop who pulled him over fired. The FBI also picked up on Sam the Plumber's relationship with the New York Mafia families. Although seen as less than, he still cut an important figure in mob high diplomacy. At the time of the recordings, the Bonanno family was embroiled in a civil war for control of the family. One faction was trying to wrestle control of the family from the Bonannos themselves, while the other was being helmed by Joe Bonanno's son, Bill. Bill, however, had spent a good chunk of his life away from the Mafia life living in Arizona. Is this sounding like anyone we know? Sam the Plumber did his best scurrying messages back and forth between the Commission and the Warring Family factions. He seemed to be in agreement with the fact that Bill Bonanno was not the right man for the job. There was also plenty of chatter about New York, New Jersey joint construction ventures and scams, including Sam having to tell two contractors they needed to give a no-show job back to a connected guy from New York. Sam scolded his captain, Joe Severa, Even if he's not with us, he's still a friend of ours. You see, I'm trying to build a relationship with the commission. Our family is small, but we can do things just as good as anyone else. Obviously, this marries Tony's relationship with the Lubertazzi crime family. Much like Tony, Sam the Plumber was a philanderer, carrying on relationships with multiple women, most prominently with a secretary at his plumbing supply company. The FBI picked up the couple talking, fighting, and canoodling. Sam even told her about his dreams. In the end, the feds decided they had enough evidence and had Sam arrested. 
Two sealed federal grand jury indictments handed down in Newark yesterday led to bench warrants and subsequent arrests today. In all, 55 persons are charged, most with an interstate numbers racket, a few with loan sharking, making high interest loans, then backing up collection with force. Of those charged, the most important is Sam DeCavalcati, the reputed head of a prominent New Jersey mafia family and well-known to the FBI who tapped his phones for years. In a major racketeering trial, Sam was given 15 years for various offenses. To add insult to injury, the transcripts were released revealing the affair with his secretary, Harriet. The press staked out his house to ask his wife what she thought about the adultery. She politely asked the press for privacy and stood by her husband. Sounding like someone else we know? Sam served his sentence and following his release promptly moved to Florida. He kept a low profile except for reportedly being involved in an initiative to legalize gambling in the South Florida area. While the family was officially run by John Ridgey, it is said that Sam the Plumber passed orders through his son, who made frequent trips back and forth between New Jersey and Florida. This is the same proposal that Tony was speaking of. For the rest of his life, Sam never went back to prison and died in Florida when he was 86 years old. A very rare instance where a mafia boss or a member in general did not die of unnatural causes or rot in prison till the end of their life. Obviously, Tony sees this as an example of how to semi-retire from the mafia life.